Can you give us a thumbs up if you can hear us? Test. Test, can you hear us? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Can you give us a thumbs up if you guys can hear us? Okay, good afternoon and welcome to Groom With Me on GGTV. And today we are doing a show barbet. This is a really awesome breed. Um, this is a, a quite an old breed. A lot of people think this is a brand new breed because they've just recently been introduced into America and uh, they are registered as of January of this year. But in fact, that's not true. This breed is one of the oldest breeds. They, uh, they can date back as far back as to the, behind the Poodle, the um, Newfoundland, Irish Water Spaniel, several different breeds have this dog behind them. They're a French breed, and they're also a sporting dog. So a couple of things when we're doing the barbet, you want to make sure that they keep a well-sprung rib, okay? So you want to make sure that they're not slab-sided. Super important when you're grooming these guys. They have a level top line. We need to take some hair off of his neck. He's pretty thick over the neck right now. When I'm doing any of my show grooming, any of you that have been following me, I always start from the ground up. I'm going to put some bevels on him. I like to put an underline and a top line on, a start and a stop at the front and the back. And then I like to combine all of those things together. So I'm just going to start. We've already had a bath, blow dry. He's completely combed out. Um, and now his uh, nails and pads are already done as well, so I'm going to start with my curved scissor. And I'm just, he's really hard on himself. This guy's always out in the field running, and so he doesn't have the greatest bevels. But I'm just going to go underneath and set those bevels on. Then I place the foot back down, and I comb it straight around. And I've already created a line underneath, and now I'm just going to fit those two lines together. And really, I just have to dust it. He is so hard on his hair, this guy. He looks very glamorous, but he's a, he's definitely a water dog. That's actually one little fun fact about the barbet. They call them the frigid water dog because they can withstand such cold temperatures in the water. So I'm just going to put that little bubble on right there. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the front bevel. Same thing. I just lift it up, comb all the hair straight down to the bottom. He hates having his front feet. <laughs> I just clear the bottom of it, put the foot back down, and then I'm going to place it where I want it to be. Comb the hair in all the directions, and I'm going to fit my bottom line to my top line. Their front legs are going to be like a cylinder. You want it to be a complete column. And you're always going to keep working from the bottom to the top of the bevel. Alright, so you can see how that's coming along now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of long straights and I'm going to put in his front end and his rear end and his top line and underline. Maybe if I have any scissors. Do you want to do long straights on this one? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I need my long straights <laughs> to be able to do this job. Uh, I'm going to place his front leg right here underneath of him. So if you notice, every, especially when I'm doing show grooming, I always have them placed and standing in the position that I want them to be in. So I want, he has, he lacks a little bit of neck and he's a bit short in the back of the neck, so I always try and tighten it up a little bit tighter in here and give him a little bit more length in neck. And I'm not really too worried about the complete finish right now. I'm always concerned more about setting up the whole haircut to begin with. So I can keep my balance. A couple of key things that I want to point out. I've been seeing a lot of people grooming this breed now. It's a really beautiful breed and I want you to stay encouraged on that. But um, a couple of things. I see them being groomed like a Portuguese water dog, number one. 
And number two, like a giant B shunt. So both of those are wrong. The key is you want to keep a level underline. They have no exaggeration, no waistline, no tuck up. Straight top line. And barbing means bearded one. So they need to have this big scruffy beard. Like it's one of the key, key things. So it's super important that you guys educate yourself. That's part of why I wanted to do this particular video. We've had this breed recognized in Canada for a very long time, and we have a number of really top, top breeders. So we've been quite fortunate because we've been exposed to so many good ones. Okay, so you just wanna make that fairly straight. But what I will do after, then I go back and I round it off with my curve shear. So I'm not gonna let him get slab sided. I want to keep that well sprung rib. And he has a beautiful rib on him, so I always want to, in any kind of grooming that you're doing, you want to show off the good and just, you know, hide the bad. Do you have any questions out there? Alright, so I've got that going on. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the back end and I'm going to put a little bit of a line on the back end too. And you can see how this is starting to take effect now on this haircut. So when I do the tail set in the croup, when you, the tail of the barbet comes straight directly off of the top one, they will get poofy here. Like some of, some of those is really crazy. They need to tame it. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly what I wild. So, and, and especially when they run around the ring, he gets excited. He's very ring, excited. He excited. <laughs> so I always just kind of comb that up, but I hold the, the tail directly off the back. And I just take my straight shears and I comb, or I scissor straight in on the top line. But the tail becomes an extension of the top line. Any questions yet? None so far. Okay, and then I lift the tail up just so I can come in under here. And I want to accentuate his pin bones and his croup. And I want to, you don't want to give him too much angulation, but I want to give him a moderate amount of angulation. So I just hold the tail up here. I've already set the top line in. And I like to do it with my curves. So just don't think of a poodle. It's not a poodle, but you still want to set this up in here. And they should have a nice, uh, a good amount of butt on them. So you want to show that off. You don't want to slap side this part either. When you're looking at it from all dimensions, it should be round. stand off my work even if I'm doing it just for me I always do stand off my work so I don't lose my balance because if I'm not looking at it it's very very simple for you to lose your way when you're grooming a dog all right now we can just start putting this haircut together on the front legs, I think this on a lot of breeds, like water spaniels, Portuguese, these guys, I'll trim it with one third on the front of the legs, two thirds on the back of the leg, and that'll just give you an illusion that they have a little bit more upper arm. And I'm just gonna take my curved shear here and do the same thing, I'm just gonna scissor it this way. That is again, he didn't get a better front, I'm just making it look like he has a better front. So I'm going to skim this in. If you're going to do this, be very, very careful. Okay, there's no guard on this. If I hit the skin, it's going to be on the skin. So be very careful when you are doing this. But I find it very effective, especially on this guy's coat. 
I'm just, I'm using it about halfway. You can use it on 10, you can use it with a guard. I just want to caution you, if you are not very, very careful and the dog is not very, very still, it can be a disaster. And make sure somebody's holding them and not calming them. <laughs> but I can really get the shape I want on him when I come in with this and just take off those little ends. And it kind of gets his, uh, you know, his sexy on and his Hollywood on and stuff. And he's a bugger about it, you see. I have to be very, very cautious with him. He likes to dance. <laughs> he's my dancer. But you can see, just a couple of minutes with that, what a difference that makes. Then I just really have, well, I'll just send her in and she can put some sugar on it now. Go on, Max, and there you go put some sugar on it. <laughs> Remember, really, really important, the underline of the barbet is dead straight. There is no indentation in the loin. It does not go in. There is no waistline, so it's dead straight. The, they're a water dog. So you need to think more like a sporting dog than a poodle. They're not a poodle. They're, they're a sporting dog. They're a gun dog. They use these for water, uh, like for retrieving birds and stuff, and they love the water. You, see, you can't keep them out of the water, actually. They're the funniest breed. They're very friendly, too. All right, so now I'm just going to put some, a little bit more on this front leg, and then we're going to just scissor up his head. I like to use a long, straight shear when I'm scissoring on these front legs. I really find, if I'm using a little tiny six inch shear, it's very difficult for me to get a really nice finish when they have, you know, a 20 inch leg or an 18 inch leg, right? Mm So if you see, I just have this foot up. It is a really great trick. He can't. He has to put his weight down on this foot for me now because I've lifted the other one. Right in here, so you want to make sure that this is full right at the back of the bubble as well. All right, so I'm going to start getting his chest in a little bit tighter. You can take an attachment just on the on the chest underneath the throat, just to take it a little tiny bit tighter in there. I'm just using the yellow with my well Rivera. It can get quite thick in here, and the leash always gets stuck and all this. So I do take this down just a little bit, just right under here. And kind of just in a little V. And plus, especially with this guy, he kind of has a short neck anyway, so I, I like to accentuate his neck just a little bit more. <clears throat> He's just getting over an ear infection too, so he has a bit of a hole that he put himself in the back of his head, but when those things happen, I just work around them. It'll be bad. So before I actually do the face, I do take off some, can you just turn this part a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I just take a little bit off of both sides of the neck so I can keep my balance before I get into scissoring the face. Okay, like I 
said, the word barbet means bearded one. So this is super important. This is what makes it a barbet, not a Portuguese or uh, any of the other ones, the doodle or anything else. So when you're going to do the top knot, the breed standard asks that you have the hair on the top of their head to reach the, the end of the nose. So you want that to come well over. And remember, when it's wet, it's going to shrink up a little bit. So you're going to really over direct that. Now what I do is I take the chunkers and I go in underneath. So you want to be able to clear the eye without exposing the eye. And you want to keep that hair down to the end of the bridge of the nose. Then I'm going to tip the head right over in front of me. I'm going to comb all this up and then I'm going to use a curve shear. And I sort of tip it down. I'm going to just blend those two lines over the top of his head now. You want to do this with a great amount of love. It's e easy to make a mistake on this, for sure. I made a million of them. Everybody does, you know. It's a difficult breed, but it's a really beautiful breed and a fun breed. And they're very smart. I love them. They do map, though. You do need to brush them often. There's a lot of work that goes into them. That is for sure. Okay, bud. Now you can see how that's starting to come together. He is missing quite a lot of hair in this ear because he had an ear infection. Um, so we'll look more primarily at this side of the face on him. You will want to dust the ends on this ear because it'll get really nasty and ugh, gross. But you're not going to take a lot off. You're just really just going to take the very ends of the lawn. So I just do that just to keep it in healthy and good condition. But uh, what I've been seeing a lot of is people are scissoring all of the beard in or they're scissoring all of the ears in, like a beach, and that's really, really not what the breed standard is calling for. So try to keep that in mind. It's not your job to change the breed standard. This breed standard is a very old breed standard. It's your job to learn the breed standard and to learn how to do it well. Preserve the breed standard. Yes, you know, we're all guardians of these breeds, so it's important that we follow what the original people of this breed, this breed almost went in state, uh, extinct. extinct, I don't know how to say that word, uh, after the war. And then there was a few people that loved the breed enough and they worked really, really hard and they were able to bring them back. Okay, so now we're gonna get to my favorite part. This is actually my favorite part and one of the best tips I'm gonna give you. You're going to love this. I, if you notice, I haven't really touched the back of his neck. I never do until I do this part. I'm just going to hook him back up here. So this is really important, and it's a great tip, and it's really easy for you to do. Um, when you do, when I do the barbers, anyway, I always blow them out properly with heat and get their hair as straight as possible. But the breed standard clearly says that they want the hair curly. So this is very, very important. This is just straight water, cold water. And you're going to do, it's, this is called marcelling. It's actually, I think, originated in Kerry Blues, as far as I know. I'm not sure. But you're just going to wet the dog down. Uh, there's no exact science. And I'm using a good amount of water. This breed can also be shown corded, but we like him to be curly instead of corded. So you want to stick to your breed uh, pattern as well. So you're going to take the jacket here, we're going to fade that off into the legs, and we're going to fade it off on the back on the angulation. I, I like to keep the front of the legs a little bit fluffy. And you definitely need to wipe down the top of the head.
Okay, you can see there's a really good amount of water on that now. And then I just take a tiny little bit of mousse. Oh, <laughs> uh, I take a little bit of mousse and I just work it in really well first before I go on there. This is a game changer. This is really what makes it curl up. It gives a nice hard curl. Not crunchy though. It doesn't feel like a lot of crap in there. It's just a good firm curl. That is really what this breed wants. It's what is desired in this breed. Now this is another great tip. The best way to do it is for them to shake because they put it all where it's supposed to be. Sometimes that chicken is like, but if you blow in their ear, they'll do it for you. <laughs> Okay, look at how much better it looks when he does it. Okay, so then we're almost done. They're not quite done. I am just going to go back now. <laughs> and now I really go back and I really tweak the rest of the haircut. You, when you have all of this, and you can see his, how this is shrunken up. That's why I usually don't scissor the neck until after I've, I've uh, put the water on. So now I just go back and I really scissor this as tight as I want to go. It is a fairly fitted body. But I find when you set it up with the curls on, it makes a huge difference on these guys. And the other thing, if I was showing him, let's just say I was going to a dog show, I would not blow out this jacket again. I would just keep adding water to it every day. And the curls just keep getting better and better. I would blow out the bottoms of his legs and his ears, but I wouldn't blow out his jacket. We just keep watering them like a fern. Mm -hmm. The more water you put on, the better they are. And I always use nice cold water as well. Yeah, they don't like hot water. Can we go without being on this hat today? Mm -hmm. Alright, so that is almost the end of our barbay. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in with us. We have been having so much fun doing this. Unbelievable. And two dogs on the same day for Purebred Day. Yay! Two that was rare breeds. Yeah, two really rare breeds. That was basically why we chose uh, the Lappers today and, and this guy because we wanted to bring Purebreds but also rare Purebreds. I really do love this breed though. I really hope you've enjoyed this particular one because it is a great breed and there is not very many of them around. Oreo's getting to be an old man now. I think he's, he's almost 10. Yeah. If not, he might, he might be 10. I'm pretty sure he's. He was top uh, Barbie in Canada several times. He's a best in show winner. He's a very nice one for you to see. All right, let me see what you got going on there, big man. Okay, and so one thing I just noticed, if you look at the top of his head, and now that it's curling up, I'm not so crazy about how awesome it doesn't look. So I'll at least add a, add a little bit more moisture and a tiny bit of this. See how much better it looks, okay? So I'm just going to take those curves, I'm just going to dust off the very end of that, and I'm pretty darn happy with how that's turned. I guess that's one other quick 
point before we go, I should tell you, is that they shouldn't be too manicured. They shouldn't be a poodle. They should still be a little bit rough and ready, okay? You don't want them to be poodleized. All right. If you guys are enjoying these videos, make sure you subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell so we upload almost every day these days. Thank you guys so much for all your likes. Like, share, and subscribe at GGTV. Groom with me.